Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and I wanted to show you my sponsor link to, the, the, these are what you're looking at are just the artificial intelligence private equity companies, uh, companies that they have private equity for on the platform. Um, this is just the AI companies on the platform right now, okay? And I'm not saying all of these are available, but they're, they have been and some of them are available right now on the platform. Now you can also search, let me see if they had, they don't have crypto per se, I don't think. Let's see what they've got as you go down. Uh, maybe they, they just call it FinTech, I'm assuming. So yeah, so they got Stripe, Uphold, just, they got Glint, Link2, I don't know if Link2 is available or not. But they, they kind of categorize them so you can see all the different things. I, I remember when I first started talking about them, they only had one or two issues, as I recall. Check this out. This is the guy that used to be the president of PayPal, David Marcus. And he's talking about Bitcoin. I just, golly, this is the same guy who brought up PayPal Galactic in 2013 and never set, talked about it again. Bitcoin is going to be the neutral settlement network and asset for the world. Uh, and we believe that it's the only asset that can be that because it's neutral enough in the eyes of everyone yep. to serve as this way to interoperate domestic real-time payment systems. So, you know, now we're going to have you know, more adoption of FedNow in the U.S. In Brazil, there's PIX. Uh, in Mexico, there's Pay. In India, there's UPI. In Europe, there's SEPA. All of these systems are different, have different account formats, use different currencies, and we believe that Bitcoin can actually serve as the 24-7 always-on grid that connects all of these payment networks. And so once you believe that, you need to make Bitcoin really efficient and fast, and that's where Lightning comes in. Yep. And so what we do is we use Lightning, we made it, we made it enterprise-grade and really easy to use, so we've uh, basically abstracted the need for companies to operate the Lightning node with all of the intricacies of opening and closing channels, mm -hmm. rebalancing and deploying liquidity, finding the best routes to route payments, split uh, payments and multi-part payments to actually reassemble them on the other side of the network, all kinds of things that are very foreign to right. companies. So we're automating all of that. Uh, and enable them to have their own nodes running our software uh, and uh, have the keys, have the control, and, uh, and we take care of the complexity for them. As I sit here, I have never heard one major name in crypto that's a Bitcoin maxi type like this guy. None of them, not one, has ever even acknowledged the, the four Satoshis meeting with Homeland Security video ever. Until they acknowledge that, I, look, I own a Bitcoin and a half, and I'll continue to own that Bitcoin and a half, but until they acknowledge that video, I don't believe a word they say, because they're obviously hiding a lot of knowledge that they have of what's going on, and none of them will even acknowledge it. So my antenna is up. Now, uh, this guy has been saying it putting out some interesting comments about the chart. He's a chart guy. XRP, we will go higher than most expect. Get ready for a God candle. Now, I zoomed in on this because I thought I saw something. It says the flip zone. The flip zone is where I want to be based on this. He's got a 589 up there to $3,600 XRP. I'm very interested in getting to the flip zone. But if you look, we're down down this way, but he, this guy is showing XRP going to crazy places. And I like the looks of it. I hope he's right. It says daily reminder, his price targets uh, for XRP, he's got a $10, Bitcoin 100,000, Ethereum 10,000. Um, $10 is a good start. Hester Pierce, over the years, we at the SEC have gotten progressively more pres prescriptive in our rulemaking approach. Uh, there's the uh, good cop at the SEC. 
Look at this, Bank XRP, Mr. Brad Garlinghouse liked it. I'm sure he's just wishing you had a, you a great day as I am. Have a great day, everybody. He liked where Bank XRP says, Mr. Brad Garlinghouse, is today going to be a great day? And then Brad Garlinghouse had tweeted this out. Thanks for chatting, Tony Rom. I guess Tony Rom from the Washington Post. For the first time in U.S. history, crypto voters will be a significant force in this year's elections. Dems, it's not too late to abandon Elizabeth Warren's anti-crypto army rhetoric and take a bipartisan stance with, with your GOP colleagues in innovation. It should never have been, a political, been political in the first place. Poor Elizabeth Warren got her butt handed to her. Now, I want to show you this. Uh, this is uh, Andy Sheckman from Miles Franklin. He is one of my sponsors. Gold revaluation is the way out. Listen to this. You know, it's interesting. Over my shoulder, I have a picture of Roosevelt who confiscated gold. That's the executive order he used to confiscate gold. That's a $20 gold coin and a, and a $20 gold certificate. It's interesting for those who don't know the gold certificates, instead of saying, in God we trust, it says payable to the bearer on demand in gold coin. But what he, in essence, did was confiscate the gold and then devalue the dollar making anyone who held gold 40% richer. And in essence, that's what I think we will see happen. Not confiscation, richer. mind you, because in 1933, everyone owned gold. Now the, the estimate is one half of 1% allocation from Joe and Jane six pack all the way up to the Harvard Endowment Fund. But it's interesting if you look at the balance sheets of all the countries uh, around the world and on the, the central bank balance sheet, Gold is held in an account, you can't make it up, called the gold revaluation account. That's the name of it. And when you have the, the, the head of the, the, the um, Dutch National Bank come out and say, we can do this, all we need to do is revalue the price of gold to get our balance sheet in order, you have to wonder, with all of the banks that have been, central banks that have been accumulating gold and repatriating gold from the traditional centers of of, of trade, the, the Bank of England and the New York Fed, um, could it be with tier one reserve status now given to gold, could it be that gold will go to levels that no one thinks possible? Could it be that Jim Sinclair was right when he said gold would reach a level of 10 or 15 or $20,000, will be pegged to a new system, it will never come down. Could Jim Rickards be right? Uh, and I believe that it really is an option that is on the table that these countries who have indebted themselves to a degree that can never be paid back, you can never pay back the debt burden that we have, let alone the 34 trillion, forget about that. How about the 175 trillion in unfunded liabilities, Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, government and military pensions. And remember a trillion seconds ago was 31,688 years ago. You can't ever pay it back. So what do you do? You reclassify gold as tier one. You incentivize all the central banks to not only repatriate their gold, but go on a gold buying spree of unmitigated proportions. You keep the media quiet, not tell anyone about what's going on. You have to dig, 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 dig to find it. And then are branded a, conspiracy, a conspiratorial, you know, um, theory guy when you talk about this stuff and lo and behold to me it makes the most sense why would the most powerful bank in the world reclassify gold as tier one why is gold held in accounts called the gold revaluation account why is the the head of the dutch national bank saying this why are all these countries just recently a whole bunch of countries from the middle east and from africa repatriating their gold from the New York Fed and the Bank of England. Why do they continue to buy it? Regardless of the drivers that would say gold should be going down. All of these things lead me to believe that gold is not about getting wealthy. Gold is wealth. Gold is wealth that has outlived two world wars, German hyperinflation, the Great Depression, and everything that's ever been thrown at it. And the more things change, the more they stay the same. And I do believe that if you are a if you are not a contrarian, you're destined to be a victim. And if you hold all of your assets and dollars, you're destined to go broke. That I do believe. And when you call me or anyone else to buy gold and silver, don't do it to become wealthy. Do it because it is wealth that has outlived everything the world's ever thrown at it. And by... He's right. And if you want some gold, they're my sponsor, milesfranklin.com. Use code DAI Gold. All right. Um, check this out. Trump talking crypto again. You announced you're taking cryptocurrency. 
we're what we're doing is we're backing it as a as a form of as a field and we have to because otherwise somebody else is going to be doing it from another country and as you know they're already trying and it's going to happen and we're going to help it happen and it's something that can be very good i think you announced you're taking cryptocurrency okay. okay and then you had this ryan selkis is correcting this uh chamath however you say his name he was saying in this clip that crypto is dead in america well oh how the tables turn crypto is dead in america it is dead in america crypto is dead in america i mean now you had gensler you had gensler even blaming the banking crisis on crypto so they've the the united states authorities have firmly pointed their guns at crypto Hmm. is it a scapegoat or was it a fuck around find out moment for crypto in your mind or a little bit of both i i don't know i just think that they were probably the ones that were the most threatening to the establishment okay and they were the ones that in fairness to the regulators did push the boundaries more than any other sector of the startup economy so turns out just like that on a dime the bad guys got put in check last week now what's interesting right now folks is with the whole trump thing and him coming in to try and save crypto now in daixrp.com we're going to talk about the i think this is all part of a great awakening where these bad guys are finally finally exposed for what they've been up to and and that means declassification that means revealing the secrets that I believe a lot of these bad guys have kept hidden for a long time. I'm going to show you in DAIXRP.com some of the things that, that are about to be exposed, I believe. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, tell your friends and family. This stuff's pretty wild and interesting, but I couldn't show it out here on YouTube. Here we go.